Greetings, uh, my name is Luke Ryan and welcome to this state in the drug war. Today is June 19th, 33 years ago, all American basketball player Len Bias died after ingesting cocaine in a University of Maryland dorm room. Joining me to discuss this tragic event is Howard Bryant. Howard is the author of many books, including most recently, Dissidents, Notes from an Uneven Playing Field. Uh, so thank you for being here today, Howard. Luke, it's good to be here, thank you. Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm sorry that we have such a kind of depressing topic here for us to dive into, but uh, can you explain who Len Bias was and why his passing meant so much to you and proved to be such a pivotal moment in the war on drugs? Oh, no question, for lots of reasons. Well, Len Bias was the, he was the future of the Boston Celtics in 1986. After they had won the championship against Houston, he was the second pick in the draft, and he was supposed to be the successor to Larry Bird and Kevin McHale and Robert Parrish, and he was going to be the one to usher them into a, another decade of the Celtic dynasty. And after being drafted, I think it was two days after the draft, he was found dead in his uh, dorm room, as you said. And it was an extremely devastating moment for me personally. I remember it because I had just graduated high school and I have basketball. I mean, the basketball and the Celtics and the Lakers and everything, that was everything to me at that, at that age. And I think that it was, it was one of the most, it's one of those moments, it's almost like the, like the challenger. It's one of those things where you can make this list of where were you when this happened? It's not a very big list. And I still remember it like it was yesterday. I was in, it just got out of high school. I was working at Star Market in North Plymouth, Massachusetts. And I was working produce, which is a terrible, terrible job if you don't like having your hands be cold. And so we're just unloading all this lettuce and ice and everything. And I get a, I get a call on the intercom. Howard Bright, come to the front desk. And I mean, you know, pre-cell phone, pre-everything back then. And so no, why is anyone calling me at work? And I get to the uh to the phone and it's my best friend calling me and he's like out of his mind he's dead he's dead and i'm like who's dead he says len bias and you're just frozen what happened and in addition to the what happened it was the how it happened and anyone if you're of a certain age you remember what that what that period was like when it came to drugs and cocaine and everything and and as a high school kid and just about to start college a lot of my friends were using drugs. A lot of my friends were using cocaine. A lot of friends out there were experimenting with all kinds of things. And I was already afraid of all of that stuff because I don't like to be impaired. So you're really never gonna see me sort of like drunk or anything like that because I just don't like that. And that scared the hell out of me. I never touched another drug outside of marijuana, really small amount for the rest of my life for the rest of it because it was just, that moment was the moment where you realized that if this stuff could kill Len Bias, then, I mean, everybody was vulnerable and it was really, really frightening. But then something else happened as well, which was the reaction to what happened. You remember obviously Death of a Dream, the cover of Sports Illustrated, and everybody was stopped in their tracks. And then of course the liability, who was responsible? The coach Lefty Drizel at Maryland, he ended up resigning. Uh, over time after that. And, and then, of course, the real, the real legacy of what happened with Len Bias is what happened with the courts and what happened in the justice system. And instead of, it's very interesting thinking about this today, when you have a moment like this, when you think of the different opioid deaths in baseball, and you realize the amount of compassion that it's been treated with today, you go back to 1986 immediately all of the legislature, whether it was the state, local, federal, everything went into draconian sentencing mode. And it's fascinating when you think about it from the standpoint that this moment from a basketball player had such a huge effect because there aren't that many moments you can think of where sports affects the justice system at such a a, a major degree. Obviously, I think one of the biggest reasons was was because Len Bias played in Maryland, and D, that's D.C. That's the D.C. area, and so all of those politicians and everybody down there, they were watching those games. Maryland, Georgetown, all those teams playing each other. It was just a, a in retrospect, it's an even bigger moment now than it was then. 